name is Ramon Lugo Jr. I'm a member of the REC, or the Relationship Enrichment Center. It's also part of the staff here. And right about now, if we are coming to the last couple hours before the start of Yom Kippur. If you know what Yom Kippur is, fantastic. But for those who don't and are watching this, just a brief kind of explanation of what it is. Today is the last day of the 10 days of awe. This is where basically God goes and examines us. And at the end of these 10 days, we're supposed to go ahead and ask for forgiveness for our sins. See, we as humans, we accumulate a lot of sins. We accumulate a lot of things in ourselves. And because of that, what happens is that God has to go ahead and have us, not Him evaluate us, but us ourselves evaluate and see what we're doing wrong in our lives. And that's why those 10 days come about so that we can figure out what we are doing. And if you've done that, fantastic. You know, it's a beautiful thing when you can self-diagnose your own self and see where the problems are that you have. Now, with that said, for some of us that haven't done that, there's still time. Even if you don't do it today, you still can go ahead and be sure to find out where your problems may lie. It may lie on the tongue, it may lie within the mind, it may lie in the heart. For a lot of us, it relies in the flesh. And because of that, what happens is that it allows us to go ahead and do things that we normally don't want to do or not even thought that we would go ahead and do, but we did anyway. But this is not to go ahead and chastise you, but this is basically to go ahead and speak about what's happening in the world today. It's just that right now it's kind of a perfect opportunity what's going on. See, a lot of times I'll go ahead and go out to YouTube like most of the world does and we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at seeing things that people are doing, saying, things along the nature itself. I kind of use it uh, kind of like my extended college, you could say, because I've learned some really, really cool things on YouTube and go ahead and learn. But like a double-edged sword, or how George Washington once said, government is like fire. It could be used to create and destroy. It can be the same thing. See, there's a lot of people out there that are saying and doing hurtful things. Some of it, you could probably understand that some of it is very, very foolish. And it does nothing but tear into people. It does nothing but to go ahead and cause damage. This is why I think today was a pretty good reason why I bring this up, seeing that we're supposed to self-evaluate ourselves. See, I see too many people that they get hurt for things that are said. And unfortunately, in life, we are going to be offended. Our Savior said this, that we will be offended. It's up to us to figure out, are we are going to allow that offense to affect us at that moment and let it go? Or allow that offense to go ahead and fester in us and take root like a weed? See, that's up to us to decide, not for me, not for you or anyone else, but for that individual to decide. Because see, when you go ahead and you let it go and you get rid of it, it's like a cancer. See, if you go to the doctor and God forbid you find out that you have this ailment, you want to get rid of it immediately because you know it's life-threatening. It will end your life. So with that, that is what offense is. 
offense is a cancer in the body that either you get rid of or you hold on to and it poisons the mind, the body, and the soul. And you know who affects? No one but you or me if we tend to keep it. So with that said, let's go ahead and start thinking about things. The sinful things in ourselves that not only we hear from out there, but we may do to other people. Oh yes, my brothers and sisters, we can't act like we're holy because we see someone else do something and say, oh, well, there's such and such, and that's so and so and whatever. We all are sinners. We all commit things that are offensive to one another. We all do things that we shouldn't do. And the best way to go ahead and rid ourselves of the evilness, the hatefulness, the anger, all these things that are going to do nothing but cause you problems and issues is to self-evaluate, ask for forgiveness, and then move on. Because if you don't, it's going to eat you away. I guarantee you it's going to eat you away. And the reason why I say it is because I myself have been through there. I myself, before I started my walk, give or take, no, excuse me, next year, it'll be a whole 10 years, which I have started my walk, which a very good friend of mine brought me to the REC. The funny thing is I only want to sit in the back and not do anything. I just want to hear the word back. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't want to do anything else. No, 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 no. Don't want to do anything. I just want to hear the word and that's it. But it wasn't meant for me to just do that. It was meant for me to do other things. It was meant for me to, to expand. To use the abilities I've learned over the years. To use the talents which I have accumulated. And then go to another season. And to another one and another one. That's why right now I'm sitting here in this chair. Speaking to you to hopefully, hopefully to go ahead and be able to help you out. Because right now is a time that we need to evaluate ourselves and be able to go ahead and move forward so that we can hit that next season. Because see, it's that promotion that we all want. We all want to go ahead and achieve some greatness. And that's fine, that's great, that's wonderful because that's what we were designed for. We were designed to become better than what we were yesterday and the day before. So what happens is that we have to go ahead and achieve that goal. And if we don't achieve that goal, we're going to become stagnant. And it's not going to do us any good. So with that said, let's look at some of the basic things and what keeps someone in the offense. And it, eventually, it becomes a sinful thing. Because the thing about it is that either you could take on the offense and carry that poison or let it go. See, in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 4.26, don't let sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. See, we hold that in ourselves. Someone says something, and we hold that, and we fester in the anger. We stew in that, that anger. It's like watching your grand, going to your grandma's house, and, well, in my case, it was I know my grandma, probably a lot of people out there in the same way. What happens that you go to your grandma's house, and your, you walk in soon as you walk into your grandma's house, you walk by the kitchen and you can smell the wonderful things she's making there and you see all the love and all the all, all the all the the 
passion, the amor, the everything she puts into it to go ahead and create this wonderful meal. See, so kind of like reverse in that aspect. Because what happens is that you go into the kitchen of hate. And because someone offended you, you allow that to stew. And unlike your, your grandmother who's creating something out of love, you're sitting there stewing in that hate and that anger and that fear and that frustration. And all those things are just stewing and stewing and stewing and stewing and stewing until you start creating that sin. And that sin is the offense. That sin is the issue that's going to grow inside you. And then you're going to want to say, I got to get back at that person because that person offended me. Instead of just saying, you know what? Lord, I'll leave it on the altar and let you take it. No. You want to go ahead and let that fester cause an issue inside you because now I have to get back at them because always I always hear that that Bible term for people an eye for an eye a tooth for the tooth but they don't understand is that an eye for an eye a tooth for a tooth the rest of that Bible verse goes save the Lord because justice is my so you can go ahead and take the offense that someone says. Take it, ball it up, and leave it at his feet, and walk away. Because therefore, it doesn't affect you. And let that thing go into a sin that's going to weigh you down, and it causes problems for you in the future. No Oh, people, the Lord has told you what is good and what is he requires of you. To do what is right, to love, mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. See, you're supposed to go ahead and let it go. You're supposed to go ahead and let that be gone. See, if you don't have fire, oh, excuse me, let me say it. If you don't have wood, if you don't have matches, you can't have a fire. No fuel means no fire. Now you're probably thinking, wait a second, hold on. How is it no fuel, no fire, but I'm still getting offended? Why? How can I be? You can have a match. The match can lay there forever and ever and ever. But unless you strike it, it's not going to light. That's simple. I see so many people that they go ahead and as soon as that match gets lit, they're throwing kerosene on top of that fire real quick to set that blaze. But the only thing you have to do is just go and blow it out. That's it. And how was that done? Taking that that they're trying to give you, ball it up and put it at the feet of the Lord and let him deal with it. See, we tell children that when they go to school and someone hits them, that they're supposed to go and tell a teacher. We tell kids and when we are, when kids are at the house, that when their sibling hits them, they're supposed to go ahead and tell a parent. So why is it now, in this time and age, that as soon as something is done, the only thing we want to do is get back at that person? It's not going to do you any good. We have to let it go. Proverbs 18, 19. An offended friend is harder 
to win back than a fortified city. Arguments separate friends like a gate locked with bars. It's so true. I've learned that the hard way. I have learned over the years, my 40 plus years on this planet, I have learned and I have evaluated myself over the years that literally the smallest of things can destroy things in a heartbeat. I remember arguments when I was a kid that if I had that with that person now, I would have not allowed it to go ahead and destroy what could have been a great friendship that probably could last today. Tell me, how many friends do you have out there right now are 10, 20, 30 years plus for us older people? How many of us can say we have friends for that long? How many of us can go ahead and say we have truly good friends that are almost like family? Not just say it, but actually are. That actually are people who 100% are like your own flesh and blood. You probably can. Or if you do, you're truly, you're blessed. But we're in such a society today that basically the simplest things set people off. The most ridiculous things that probably wouldn't face someone five years ago would have been an issue. But now, it is a major problem. We're living in days, as it says in Revelation, that was wet is now dry. What is up, it is down. What is right, is not wrong. We cannot allow the poison of others to affect us so that we become sinners. Because we already are. But we can minimize the sins we commit and future sins, mostly, when we do the right thing. There's a saying that says forgiveness is the final form of love. And that's what we need to be giving. If we had more love in this world, we will have less pain, less anger, less frustration, less misunderstandings, and more understanding. As you value Evaluate yourself today. And for those who don't follow as a Messianic or a Jew or anything like that, evaluate, evaluate yourself today and keep doing that. And see what weeds you find in your garden. It's up to you to figure that out. And to see what you can do. Because I guarantee you, there is someone out there right now who's listening to this video, looking at this face right now, that's going through some pain and some frustration. And I want to say two things to you. Your answer is literally prayer way you will can find salvation and your answers you just have to go ahead and ask for it and it will be done and two I pray that you find that solution that answer May his blessed mercy be upon you so that you 
can find what it is that will bring you your happiness and joy, that will bring you closer to Him so that you can understand the peace that only He can give you. Nothing else in this world can give you that peace except for Him, our Blessed Father. And I pray, Father, hear me, that whoever is out there, I don't care if it's one person or millions, I pray each and every single one of you out there will be able to find the answers that you're looking for, the answers that you so need in your life. Right now, start on that one thing. What is the offense? What is the sins in your life that you need to get rid of so that you can be a better person? You will begin to heal when you let go of the past hurts. Forgive those who wronged you and learn to forgive yourself for your mistakes. Well, here's another one. And this is for myself, for everyone who may see this. And this is right now, not just for you to hear, but this is for myself as I examine my sins and ask for God forgive, for forgiveness as well as ask those that I have made that sinful thing and done wrong to them. And that is that to those I have wronged, I ask for forgiveness. To those I may have helped, I wish I did more. To those I neglected to help, I ask for your understanding. To those who helped me, I sincerely thank you so much. With that, thank you for listening. Come back. And there's many more of my brothers and sisters that are going to be on this channel that I'm sure that will help you out with the things that we go ahead and tell you about. With that, God bless. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious upon you. And may he give you his shalom peace.